Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome back to Canterbury Cottage. I'm so glad you decided to watch my video today. And I think you'll be glad too, because I have so many great ideas that I want to share with you today. I believe that you shouldn't have to spend a lot of money on gifts to let people know that you love and appreciate them. So today, I want to show you how to create some truly unique and thoughtful gifts. I also want to show you some fun ideas for personalizing your gift wrapping. I think there's something here for everyone. So if you're ready, let's get started. You guys know that I will decoupage just about anything, but did you know that you can decoupage on soap? I bought these extra large bars of soap at Dollar Tree. I used 220 grit sandpaper to lightly remove the brand name on the top of the bar. And then I taped some tissue paper to a piece of cardstock to run through my printer. I created images in Canva in sizes to fit the top of my bar of soap. And then I printed out the images on the piece of tissue paper. I let the ink dry for an hour and then I cut out the images. I applied a thin coat of Mod Podge to the top of the soap and then carefully laid the image on top of the Mod Podge. I used a small paintbrush to smooth out any wrinkles. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I lightly sanded the edges of the tissue paper with 220 grit sandpaper and then I applied a coat of dishwasher safe Mod Podge. You can use regular Mod Podge if you like, but I would recommend applying three coats. When the Mod Podge is dry, you will be able to use the soap. It will melt mostly from the bottom, maintaining the image on the top until the soap is almost gone. I purchased these pretty dishes at the thrift store to use with the soap. Because when giving gifts, I think presentation is almost as important as the gift itself. I tied ribbon around the dish and the soap to hold it in place, and then stuck in some scraps of greenery. If you prefer liquid soap, I have a gift idea for you, too. Buy some liquid soap that comes in a pretty glass dispenser. You can find them at places like Home Goods and Tuesday Morning for 6 or $7. That may seem pricey until you look at what an empty soap dispenser costs. They sell for easily over $10. To dress up the plain jars, I printed out some holiday images. For the rounded soap dispenser, I applied Mod Podge to the side of the jar and to the back of the image, smoothing out any wrinkles. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I applied the dishwasher safe Mod Podge over the top. For the square jar, I applied a thin coat of Mod Podge to the front of the image and then adhered it to the back of the soap dispenser so that you could see the image through the glass. Like I did with the bar soap, I dressed up the glass jars with ribbon and some scraps of greenery. I hot glued the adornments to the ribbon so that later on they would be easy to remove. Several viewers requested packaging ideas for food gifts, and the traditional storage tin is the perfect container. 
but let's see if we can improve on it a little. Just painting the outside of the tin with a couple coats of chalk paint makes a huge improvement. Then you can dress it up with decals or stickers. I created this birch tree design and cut it from vinyl on my Cricut machine to apply to the outside of my can. I should have applied a clear top coat over the chalk paint because the transfer paper pulled up some of my chalk paint, but luckily it was very easy to touch up. I hot glued a piece of birch branch to the lid for a knob, and after touching up some more paint, I added some additional embellishments like a small tree and a deer. Then I applied a coat of clear polyurethane to the outside, which is food safe once it's completely dry. I printed out an image of a vintage Santa to apply to a small rectangular tin that I had also painted with green chalk paint. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I lightly sanded the edges of the paper and then applied a clear polyurethane top coat. This tin would be perfect for holding small gifts like earrings or a gift card. If you want to go all out, you can create a tree using round canisters in increasing sizes. For my first tree, I painted three round canisters with Dixie Belle Kudzu Green chalk paint. I applied two coats of the chalk paint and then a coat of clear polyurethane. I created some guidelines so that when I glued the three canisters together, they would be relatively centered. For added interest, I hot glued a small log slice to the bottom and a small birch branch to the top. To finish it off, I wired a bow to the birch branch on the top. For the second tree, I did not paint the tins. Instead, I hot glued pom-pom garland to the lids to unite the tins. I also hot glued the bottom tin to a metal candle stand and hot glued some miniature ornaments in random spots. I decided to go all out on this last canister. First, I sprayed it with some Zinser White Primer. Then I cut up a bunch of sticks from my yard to the length of the canister and I began hot gluing them around the sides of the can. As with previous projects that I've shown you involving sticks, the straighter the stick, the better. I had a few crooked sticks that didn't want to stay glued down. To make sure the sticks stayed put, I went around the canister two or three times with twine about an inch from the bottom. I couldn't decide what to do along the top of the canister, and so I decided to hot glue on some fringe. This would help the sticks to stay in place and create a cleaner look along the top of the can. To disguise the appearance of the hot glue holding the sticks, I applied some spray adhesive and then sprinkled on a little fake snow. For a touch of whimsy, I glued on a couple tiny plastic deer just above the twine. I decided that I would keep this canister and so I stuffed it with some recycled styrofoam and then I added a Dollar Tree Christmas tree to the styrofoam. To give it a frosty look, I took the tree outside and sprayed it down with some fake spray snow.
Here is a fun gift idea perfect for so many different people. Find three small glass jars with lids. Paint the lids white if you like. Fill one jar with hot cocoa mix, one with mini marshmallows, and one with crushed peppermint. Add or draw on a carrot nose onto the smallest jar, and then using a paint pen, add eyes and a mouth. Hot glue a couple buttons to the middle jar, and then hot glue the three jars together. I popped the hat off of a cheap Walmart snowman ornament and hot glued that to the lid on the top. Use a paint pen or marker to disguise the hole in the top of the hat. I also glued some black ribbon around the top lid to make the hat look larger. Cut a scrap of fabric to create a scarf and hot glue that to the lid of the middle jar. Here's a wrapping idea that can make receiving gifts like socks or underwear a whole lot more fun to receive. Fold a piece of craft paper or heavy gift wrapping paper over on itself. Then draw and cut out a Christmas shape or a funny shape. Make sure your two pieces of paper are perfectly aligned one on top of the other. Then take your hot glue gun and create a thin line of glue along the edges in between the two pieces of paper. Leave an opening so that you can insert the gift and after putting it inside, use hot glue to close it shut. Decorate the gift however you like. I glued some pom-pom trim along the top and made a small wreath from a pine stem. I also added the recipient's name using letter beads. This is actually a very quick and easy project. I followed the same process to create a second package, this time using a mitten shape. I just sketched out the image in pencil on the paper and then erased my marks after I had it cut out. These simple packages are fun to decorate. You could use a Sharpie marker and draw little pictures or write funny phrases on it. A viewer recently requested that I make an exploding box, but I didn't know what it was. And when I researched it and saw all of the cuts and all of the precise measurements, I thought, there's got to be an easier way. So I bought three boxes of increasing size at Dollar Tree. Then, using a metal ruler and an X-Acto knife, I cut all the way through the corners on all three boxes until they would lie flat in the shape of a big plus sign. Jasper, if you're watching this video, you need to turn it off right now. Okay, so my nephew loves the video game Minecraft, and so I found 12 different Minecraft images and printed them out in sizes to fit the sides of the exploding box. Keep in mind that you'll need three different sizes of images. I attached my images just using glue stick. You could print out photos or quotes. In fact, there are a lot of fancy things that some people do with these boxes. 
Jasper also loves Legos, so I bought a small box of Legos that had a Minecraft theme to put in the center of my box. You can put back all three lids if you'd like, but I like the effect of using just the one large lid. Then the box truly does explode. Even though I included the directions inside the exploding box, I decided to cut apart the Lego box and attach the picture to the top of the exploding box using a glue stick. Now to see if it works. Okay, that was fun. Let's do it again, this time in slow motion. As a finishing touch, I printed out Jasper's favorite Minecraft character, the Axolotl, and I glued him to a piece of cardboard and cut it out to create a name tag that I could attach to the exploding box. I love how this turned out, and I can't wait to see Jasper open it, unless, of course, he is still watching this video. Did you know that you can create your own personalized word search puzzle online? The wordsearch.com site is very easy to use and allows you to print your puzzle out in white, red, or blue. Once you print it out, you can use it to wrap a small package or put it on a large package in place of a name tag. Candles are always a good gift option, but I think we can do better than the store-bought generic candle in a jar. For this project, you can start with a store-bought candle or use a jar that you already have at home. Cut out landscape silhouettes in black vinyl on your Cricut machine and apply them around your glass jar. Put a candle wick in the middle of your jar holding it in place by running it through a hole in a straw. Melt some old candles down in an oven set at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It can take anywhere from 30 minutes to over an hour. Pour the melted wax into your glass jar. Then add a few drops of your favorite fragrance oil. You can add crayons to the melted wax to change the color. If you don't have a Cricut machine, you can create unique and personalized labels to decoupage to the outside of your jars. Or you could purchase the wood cutouts at Dollar Tree to adhere to the outside of a glass jar. I used just the trees from two of the wood sets, cutting the trees apart using an X-Acto knife and my miter shears so that the trees would fit on the four sides of my jar. I sanded down the rough edges where I had cut the trees apart, and then I spray painted them white on both sides. I distressed them a little using a Dollar Tree sanding block, and then I adhered them to my jar using Starbond Super Glue. I was able to fit two trees on the front and back and one tree on each side. For this jar, I decided to use a battery-operated votive candle, so I added some fake snow and some greenery stems into the jar along with the votive candle. Then I sprayed the greenery and the inside of the jar with spray snow. To make our candles even more unique, let's make coordinating matchboxes. Once you have found the images that you would like to use, 
Print them out in a small size to cover the front and back of a matchbox. Apply Mod Podge to the back of the image and then adhere it to your matchbox, smoothing out any wrinkles and cutting off any extra paper. You could apply a top coat, but I didn't bother. I think some of the best gifts are those that remind us of our past and our loved ones. I took pictures of one of my mother's old recipe cards and then uploaded those photos into Canva so that I could create some graphics to go around the photos. I printed the image onto an iron-on transfer for light fabrics and then I ironed it onto a white tea towel. Even if you don't know how to use Canva, you could still take pictures of some of your family's memorable recipes and create your own personalized tea towels. To go with my onion pie recipe card tea towel, I created an onion design in Canva and printed it out on regular copy paper. I cut the paper into strips to fit around the handle of two wooden spoons and then I applied Mod Podge to the spoon and to the paper to adhere the two together. I then went over the paper with Mod Podge Hard Coat, which provides a food safe, durable, and washable finish. You can also decoupage fabric to wood utensils and protect it just the same with the Mod Podge Hard Coat. Now I want to share some inexpensive ideas for gift adornments that can double as tree ornaments. For the first idea, you'll need the Dollar Tree deer head ornament and an inexpensive wood round. Mine is a wood Easter egg. Paint or stain your wood round and then hot glue your deer head to the wood round. I chose to dress my deer head up by wrapping a scarf around its neck. And then I took the greenery that came with it and attached that to the top of the deer's head. I cut a small rectangle from an old Christmas card to use as a name tag and attached it to the deer head with some ribbon. I bought these little red mittens at Dollar Tree. I pushed some ribbon through the fabric to create a loop for hanging. Then I used a little hot glue to hold some greenery scraps inside the mitten. Lastly, I created another Christmas card name tag, which I tied on with ribbon. For the next project, you'll need a lid, any kind of lid, like the ones that come on those store-bought jar candles. Cut a circle of decorative paper to fit inside your lid. You could use an old Christmas card, scrapbook paper, wrapping paper, or even fabric. Use glue stick or Mod Podge to adhere it inside your lid. Drill a hole in the side of the lid and then run some ribbon or twine through it to create a loop for hanging. Hot glue a pipe cleaner or some other trim along the inside edge of the lid and then again along the outside edge of the lid. I decided I wanted this ornament to be sparkly and so I sprayed it with some spray adhesive and then sprinkled on some iridescent glitter. From the back, you could tell this was a lid, and so I cut out a second circle from the same Christmas card and adhered it to the back of the lid with some spray adhesive. I smoothed out the edges with a Dollar Tree sanding block and then applied a thin coat of Mod Podge. I followed the same steps to create a second ornament, this one for my niece, who was currently crazy about wolves and so I printed out a small picture of a wolf and glued it inside the lid taken from an old jar of face cream. 
I added the trim around the edges of the lid, but this was a much prettier lid and so I didn't need to put anything on the back. And because it was plastic, it was easy to drill a hole to create a loop for hanging. Recently, a viewer asked if I had any ideas for using old prescription pill containers. And so here's one idea. Wrap the container in a scrap of fabric. I used a piece of old burlap ribbon. Hot glue it in place. Tie some twine or ribbon near the top and cut off the excess fabric. Put a little styrofoam into the pill container and then add some greenery scraps. If you want, cut a little piece of fabric to cover the bottom of the pill container and hot glue it in place. I followed the same process on a second pill container, only this time I used brown craft paper instead of burlap and I just folded the extra paper over at the top. Then I glued on an extra label that I had left from when I made the hot cocoa jar set. For a snowy effect, I applied some spray adhesive to the greenery and sprinkled on a little fake snow. I genuinely hope that I gave you some ideas for creating thoughtful and personalized gifts this holiday season. And as always, I'd love to know if you're going to try out any of these ideas. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye for now. I'm so glad you decided to watch my video today. <laughs>